Oh, wow, what a cute. Ripped Rama's clothes off without even touching them. Oh, what a great fight. It's a thing of beauty. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I'm just reading a book. Because I read a lot of books. Because I'm literate. Anyway, here's the list of the top ten books I have read. So, hope you enjoy. Cue the intro. About a year and a month ago, I was um, tagged in a Facebook post asking me to say my top 10 favourite books because this other person said what their top 10 favourite books are. Anyway, I'm not one to back from a challenge, especially one that happened a year and a month ago. So we're going to do that now, but I'm not going to do it as a cheesy little Facebook status. No, I'm going to do it as a video on this channel. So let's get on to it. Let's get on to it right now. So here's the list. Okay, so number ten um, is *To Kill a Mockingbird*. It's it's a book I had to read um, during GCC um, English because you know you have, in GCC English in Britain you have to read one book in the class, and usually it's either *To Kill a Mockingbird*, *Of Mice and Men*, or a third book I can't remember. But yeah, um, our class did um, *To Kill a Mockingbird*, and you know it's a book that really stuck with me. It's it's quite an interesting book. Um, it's spoiling Rachel Chenson in a very interesting time in America from the viewpoint of a little girl. But not just that, like, it's about other plot lines as well. It's just about this little girl and three years in her life and all the ups and downs that goes on into it. I mean, the book drastically changes its plot at every single point because, you know, life is ever changing. Like, midway through the book, there's a court case scene. It's, you know, I really love To Kill a Mockingbird and I would recommend everyone to read that book. But it's only number 10 because there's nine other books I think is better than it. So, let's get on to the ninth one. Now, number nine is The Hobbit, and I know what you're thinking, oh, Reese, out of all the J.R. Tolkien books you could have picked, you picked The Hobbit. Why, why not any of the Lords of the Ring books? And uh, I tell you the one reason why, because I just like Hobbit more, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, the Lord of the Ring books are really good epic fantasy quests with big wars and battles left and right and adventures as far as the eye can see, but I I kind of just like the more toned down experience of the Hobbit, like, I, I, I kind of like how the whole idea of the Hobbit was just this journey to get to this mountain, and, like, and you know, a lot of stuff happened at the mountain, like the, the War of the Five Armies and so forth, but... And I don't I want to be mean to Lord of the Rings, because I, I do like those books as well, but I, I, I just feel like there's more character to The Hobbit. Like, I, I feel like I know more about Bilbo than I would ever know about um, Frodo. Like, I, I, I find Bilbo Baggins a more interesting character, if, if you understand what I mean. And that's why I rate The Hobbit as number nine on my list. But there's still eight more to go! Okay, so, uh, number eight, and this may sound very strange, but uh, just go with me here, um, is The um, Hungry Caterpillar. Now, I know what you might be thinking, oh, Reese, The Hungry Caterpillar, that's a book for, like, babies and stuff. And you're right, that is a book for babies. But it was the book that I read as a baby, and it helped me become the man I am, because if I did not read The Hungry Caterpillar, I probably would get nowhere in life. You know, The Hungry Caterpillar takes you vital life skills that you need. Like, for example, if you stuff your face so much, you turn into a beautiful butterfly. And that's a rule I will follow to this very day. So that's why The Hungry Caterpillar is number eight. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so I'm kind of cheating here because this is not one book, this is six books. Also, I'm also kind of cheating because some people may claim, yeah, oh, these are not books, they're comic books. That, that don't count. Well, you're wrong because they're not comic books, they're graphic novels. And it's the Scott Pilgrim series. But yeah, um, I, I think Scott Pilgrim was a really good series. Wait, the characters in it are quite interesting. Like, just the character of Scott himself, just like everything we get to know about him in those six volumes, it's, it, it's very interesting to see him grow as a character, but also just the, how much of an... how much of an asshole he is throughout the series, and then with the sixth book going, hey, you're a big asshole, Scott, and, you know, just shining the spotlight finally in the last volume. Like, the whole story is pretty interesting, and I... It's not just like the battles that he have against the evil exes in the in the series, but it's all, also just the in between moments. As he, it's the in between moments that make the series as a whole. Because it, it it's just interesting to see what all the characters are doing throughout their life until you know until you get to another. Oh, Scott has to fight against another evil ex, and yeah, yeah it's, that's one of the reasons why I like that series. It's just a nice little slice of life mixed with fight scenes occasionally. Uh, and that's why it's my um, number seventh. But there's still six more books to go! Okay, so um, number six is a um, fanfic that I found online. Um, it's written by me. I, it's written by this very excellent writer. He's very talented, in my opinion. And I'm going to read a quick um, part from it um, on my tablet here. So, you know, read along with me. I mean, don't read along with me because it won't be on the screen, but I'm just going to read it for you right now. Anyway, Lottie returned home from work after a busy day in the office, when all of a sudden, who comes through the door? None other than Hat Reese. I mean, not Hat Reese, I mean, no, not me, um, Cap Rick. Yeah, Cap Rick. He wears a cap, not a hat. There's a difference. Anyway, so Caprick goes through the door. Lottie, with lust in her eyes, go, Oh, Caprick, what are we going to do on the bed? Pomp. And Caprick is like, Oh, well, you know. They're both lovingly staring into each other's eyes. When all of a sudden, that guy appears. And he's like, Caprick, you finally are going to be defeated by me, that guy, in an epic duel to the death. And Cap Rick's like, yeah, I'm going to defeat you in an epic duel with my fist. So then Cap Rick and that guy have an epic battle that spams the air of time itself. And, you know, that's a good fanfic. Like, I would read more of it right now, but it's a very long fanfic. It's, it's like, longer than War and Peace. So I, I won't read it now, but I would recommend reading that fanfic. So good. So good. And that's my number six. So there's still five more books to go. So uh, num my number fifth is all the volumes of the manga Love Hina. Uh, they're not a good, it's not a good series. I would not recommend reading it. So you might be wondering why do I have it number fifth on my list? Well, it's because I was sad enough to have all 14 volumes of it as a teenager. So heck, they're still under my bed. Like, I could literally go under them there and show you all 14 volumes. So I thought I might as well put them on this list because I did read them all as a teenager because I was that sad. So uh, that's number fifth on the list. Um, uh, number fourth on the list is Holes. Um, I see I can't remember why I put Holes on this. It's a good book. Um, but I actually can't remember anything about Holes. And it was about a kid who had gone to trouble and he could have gone into jail or go into this place to dig holes and he was like, oh, I'm going to dig holes. That sounds simple. And then he's like, oh no, it's not simple. Oh no. So then he's digging holes with other kids. And they're like, oh, if we dig this hole good enough, we could escape. Yeah, I think that's what the book was about. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm badly remembering it at the moment. But but yeah, you know what? It's, it's number four. Even if I can't remember what happened in that book, it's number four. So that's that's number four on the list. So we've got three more to go. Are you, are you ready to see what the last three are? Because they're all really good books. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, number three is a very interesting book. It's it's a modern day classic. It looks through like it, it paints a picture of society itself, I believe, and it's a very expansive book. It's very detailed, and some of the scenes in it are just really interesting. Like I, it's it's a modern day artwork, and oh wait, hang on a second. Ah, oh, damn, damn it! I ah. Uh, I accidentally edit in the wrong image. <laughs> I hate when I do that, you, you know, because I, I clearly edit these videos before I film them, and so I, I, I accidentally edit in the wrong image. So that completely ruined it. <laughs> That's not the right thing. This is a rant. D don't look at that. That's completely the wrong thing, and I accidentally put the wrong thing into the video. I'm really sorry about that. Let's just move on to number two, because I, I made a goof there. I will admit that I made a goof. So let's go into number two. Now, number two, um, this book had a lot of versions, and it can be confusing which version to get, because there's a ton of versions. Some smaller than others, some bigger than others, like, you can get ones that have, like, this size, and word length, you know, they're left as well, but, you know, uh, when I recommend if you ever do try and get this book, um, what I recommend is just picking the version you feel comfortable with. And, you know, sometimes it can be quite hard to find this book, I can understand that, but just find a version you're comfortable with holding your hand and using, and uh, that book is The Dictionary. Look at this dictionary. And Thesaurus. This is the Dictionary and Thesaurus. Uh, but uh, just the Dictionary by itself is fine, and it's a very good read. Um, I especially love uh, looking for certain words and giggling like a child while reading them. I would recommend buying it from all your good bookstores if they have them in stock. Because sometimes they don't have this in stock. And if they don't, screw that bookstore. Because they should have it in stock. Anyway, let's get on to my number one. What is my favorite book of all time? Well, you ready for this? Number one is my Magnus Opus. Someday, someday I will finish writing you, and maybe the world can see, oh, it's an alright book. Till that day you're just an empty blank dock, but someday my Magnus Opus will be written. And that was my top 10 books. Now, uh, this was one of those Facebook stages where you had to tug people uh, to carry on with their list, but I go against the waves of society, so you know what? I'm not going to tag anyone. 